This is DJ Rem from Metalhead Radio, and I have Justin from Crown by Fire on the line. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you, man? I'm kind of tired. <laughs> you worked all day or what? No, no. We've been at the NAMM show all day. You know, I saw, I was checking your Facebook uh, earlier, and I saw some pictures, so that had to be cur- pretty cool. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm here in L.A., so we go every year, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's it's always the same thing. You know, you walk, you know, 15 miles, and and you walk those miles very slowly because it's so packed, you can barely, you know, get through anything, and, and you know, it's just, you know, you're burned out by the by the end of it, man. Usually we go out drinking and stuff like that afterwards, but uh, this year I, I decided to cut it short. You know, I got... We got a lot going on this year, so I'm just trying to, you know, focus and uh, and just, uh, you know, try to stay business oriented instead of I'll get bombed all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, I hear you, man. So, okay, so let's start with uh, what's going on with the band. What are you guys up to right now? Uh, well, we just uh, we just did some. Uh, we're, we're, we've been in the studio doing some uh, pre-production for a new record. Um, and honestly, you know, I mean, a buddy of ours, Chris Collier, uh, who runs CMC 21 Studios, uh, this kid's a musical genius, you know, so, I mean, it's like the pre-production stuff sounds like an album. I mean, I, it might not even have to, it might just become the album at this point. I don't know, it's so good that, like, you know, it just it sounds, it sounds perfect. So, um, so we've been doing that, and, uh, you know, we've got a bunch of interests you know, from all different facets of the, of the music industry. I can't really talk about it right now. Um, but uh, soon, you know, everybody will know what's going on. And, um, you know, so, I mean, we started 2012 out with a bang. You know, I mean, as far as, like, what the public knows, you know, is, 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 is we're keeping everything under wraps right now. Um, but as far as, like, you know, from the inside, you know, it's like, wow, we're only 20 days into the new year and a lot has happened. So... Um, you know, it's exciting, man. Um, and uh, we're getting ready to do uh, a stretch of uh, shows with Prong. Uh, I'm good friends with Tommy Victor. And uh, so he's asked us, he's been a fan of, of ours for a long time. And, you know, likewise, obviously, I grew up listening to, to him. And, um, and so he offered to have us uh, uh, open for a string of Prong shows. Uh, for the new record that's coming out, so that's really exciting, and um, we're getting ready to uh, February sixth. We're opening up for Steel Panther at the House of Blues on Sunset, and um, you know, should be neat, man. You know, there's just, there's just a lot of stuff happening, and a lot of the things that are happening are going to determine what's going to happen throughout the year. So, as far as anything past that, I can't really say because it really depends on whether or not certain things go through. And if these certain things go through, well, then sky's the limit, you know? So it's kind of hard to say really uh, right now what what's going to happen or what our plans are because we don't know, you know? Right, and that, that's very cool, and uh, I wish you all the luck with that and hope everything works out. Well, thank you, you know? So I want to... Uh, before we really get into things here, I want to thank uh, Trevor from Digital Media Records for, uh, he sent in your tunes to the station, and after I listened to them, I was like instantly hooked, so I want to thank him for sending them in and, and helping get this all hooked up. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, you know, Trevor is like our fifth band member, man. I mean, that guy, you know, he he signed us and came into the fold, and he's by far been the most valuable person that we've ever had uh, work with the band, hands down. I mean, you know, he's basically taken taken role as our manager, our label guy, our booking agent, our everything, you know, and he's on us every day, all day, constantly, you know, and, and it's like we we owe him, you know. Um, you know, I, we of course, we can't, you know, pay him financially, but, you know, right now at least. Um, but, uh, you know, somewhere down the line, so we're going to be getting that guy back in some way, shape, or form because he's he has everything to do with why we're where we're at right now. Of course, the music you know stands on its own, but he saw a good product and he saw it just sitting there, and he was like, "Man, you know, with a little bit of push, you know, these guys can really go far." And um, you know, he's really definitely um, 
uh, helped a lot, man, with with everything. He's 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 amazing, man. That's that's very cool. It's it's good to have somebody like that on your side. That's for sure. You know, we're really lucky. I, I must say, you know, I've been in a lot of different bands, worked with a lot of different professional situations, and it's always just this big nightmare, you know. And even though we've had our ups and our downs, we've, we've had our downs, but our downs were always like, oh, well, shit, this radio, this, this, this record company isn't putting our record out as quick as they said they were going to. Right. These, are good, these are good problems to have, you know, and this band has always had that issue. Like, we've had to, like, you know, um, change out musicians, you know, not because we didn't get along with them, but because the fucking scheduling was way too gnarly for, for some of them to be able to stay in the band, you know, we, we, you know, maintain friendships with most of them, stuff like that, I mean, it's like, that's the thing with this band, I mean, you know, we don't argue, we don't fight, you know, it's just none of that, it's like, knock on wood, you know, but I mean, it's just none of that, it's just, it's just, it's always been this, since day one, it's just been this sort of effortless thing that's always just taken flight on its own, and, you know, and, and the longer that we've been in this band, John and I specifically, because it's really in the end of the day become our, our baby because we're the only two real original members um, you know we've learned to just sort of lay back not stress out don't flip out don't put the whole thing in a headlock because you know uh, just let it just let it let the momentum take itself and just let the, the, the band take its own course and just hold on for the ride you know and, and don't try to uh, we don't try to really force the issue we don't really you know try to say we need to sound like this or we need to sound like that I mean we have discussions about music but we're, we're so comfortable as musicians when we we want the same thing and we know what it's going to sound like sort of and we just sort of like let the songs write themselves and we just kind of it just becomes this thing and um, it's really kind of a neat thing to be part of man you know yeah it sounds like it that's very cool so how long have you how long has the band existed then uh, the band has actually been together like uh, I would say it's been about six years now, maybe six and a half. I think it was in January, so right around now, sometime around now is our anniversary. What particular date we don't remember, right? But we do know that it was in January at some time. So I think we're going on six years now, you know. And since day one, it's just progressively just. Stepped up, stepped up, stepped up, stepped up, stepped up. And it just, it never, like, even when it was stagnant, like, it was only, again, because, like, you know, we got signed, we recorded the record in Florence, Italy, and then, like, you know, the uh, the uh, the label fell apart when we got back. So we ended up just, like, sort of sitting around on this record not knowing what to do, you know? And, you know, that was the only other time it was, like, stagnant. And, again, it was stagnant for a good reason. Was it stagnant because the band fell apart? You know what I mean. Like, and so, 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 yeah. I mean, it's been it's been six six really interesting, cool years, man. It's definitely been um, all the things that I used to dream of as a kid, you know, and and, and constantly uh, think about what would it be like to get signed, or what would it be like to go on the road, or what would it be like if I had my own band, you know, and we had all of our shit together, we had this kind of gear and. And now it's here. It's right there in front of me. You know what I mean? I have all the guitars that I want, and all this cool equipment, and, and the, you know, all these the cool guys that, like, are involved with it, have been in the band, and we do cool shit, like, you know, play strip clubs, and, you know, all the things that you think of you would want to do when you were a kid, and, and it's like this band has enabled us to do that. And uh, it's really neat to just kind of sit back and look at it and go, fuck, man, we're doing it. You know, so yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, can you go ahead and and, met, and go ahead and just uh, name off the other the other guys in the band and what their spots are? Yeah, well, John Fitterer is the vocalist, uh, and then you got me on guitar. You got Chris Breedlove on bass, and you got William Learman. We call him Willie on drums, and uh, you know it's a it's just a four piece. So Willie and Chris are new to the fold. There's other guys that are on the plate on the record uh, who are no longer in the band. But again, you know, we're still buddies with them and everything. They're just doing other shit. Um, and uh, uh, so, yeah, those are the guys that are, that's the current lineup right now. 
So this um this this current album is this the one that was recorded over in Italy then? Yeah, the prone to destroy it. Okay. It, you know, uh, you want to hit the bar, dude, and grab a drink. I don't know, schooners or, or mabels. Uh, all right. Um, uh, yeah, you know, it's, you want to get off here. Um, sorry. Hopefully, you can edit that out. No, it's uh, all good, man. <laughs> what was the question again? About the album that there was recorded in Italy. I guess how did you end up over in Italy? I guess that's what I'm really curious. Well, it was it was weird, man. It's like they we got this like. It was when MySpace was real big, you know, and all we wanted to do was get a record deal. Right. And um, we kept uh, we kept trying to, um, uh, you know, we, we, we were trying to figure it out. We went. To, I used to work. I used to work for Ozzy and Zach Wild. Okay, so I knew Blasco, and so we got a hold of Blasco, um, and he was doing this like like firm like you have a and you. And then you talk to him, tell you what he thought you needed to do, and he listened to your material and tell you whether he thought it was strong or not or whatever. And we had this really killer demo, which is five of the songs that are on Prone to Destroy. And so we went down, we talked to him, and his whole thing was like, dude, just get your numbers up on MySpace. The labels are, are watching, and you guys have the material that it takes. So when those numbers are up, man, you're going to start popping up, and they're going to notice you, and then you're going to get offers. So we were like, okay. So we took his advice, and that's exactly what we did. Next thing you know, boom, we get like three offers in one week. It wow. was weird. It was like, yeah. So then we, we decided to sign with this one label, and there were these Italian guys, but they were based in London. And so then um, they said, do you want to record the record over here in Italy, in Florence? And we're like, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we did it. And uh, that's how we ended up over there. We lived on a winery, like an uh, olive oil farm for like five weeks uh, recording in this like prestigious studio in this like old like Phoenician town if I don't even know if Phoenician is the right word but like, everything is made of marble and there's like co- cobblestone roads and I mean this place has been around for I think like a thousand years or maybe longer I mean forever and ever and ever and um, you know like uh, the Romans and shit used to go go through there and uh, it was just really trippy. That sounds like a rough five weeks. <laughs> yeah, it kind of was actually <laughs> because we were just sh- shit faced the whole time. But um, uh, you know, we definitely, um, you know, we definitely got a lot accomplished. But then when we got back, um, it was like we were trying to, you know, figure out what the next step was, and, and we weren't hearing back from the label. And then come to find out, the two guys that ran the label were having some big tiff, and uh, they fell apart. Well, we ended up with the record. So then we, we spent, like, you know, the next year trying to figure out what the hell we were going to do, you know, with this record. It right. was kind of bittersweet. It was weird. I mean, and, and in hindsight, in hindsight, it was, it was the best thing that could ever happen. It was like somebody walking into a room and saying, here, here's 80 grand in a trip to Italy, but you have to spend the 80 grand recording your record, and you have to do it in Italy. And then turning around and walking out. And that's basically what it came down to. So, you know, it was really a blessing in disguise. So now we have this record, and and uh, now it's out on digital media records. And um, so, yeah, so, you know, that's basically the story behind that whole deal. Cool. So I was, I was checking out the um, the album cover for that, for the record, and it's, it's just, it's killer. Who, um, who came up with the concept for, for the design of that? Uh, Sam Sheeran. Uh, came up with the concept and, and uh, I, had, I was actually I was playing around on Facebook one day and I accidentally stumbled across his artwork and um, uh, I stumbled across his artwork and it was for the new uh, A Pale Horse Named Death record which is like a tribute to um, uh, what's his name from Typo uh, Peter Steele and um uh, uh, you know, the sky, uh, Johnny Kelly and them guys uh, put the band together and did, like, you know, a, a tribute to him. Anyways, the album cover blew my mind. I was like, that is the coolest album cover I've ever seen in my life. And I and I saw that it was him that did it, and I just wrote him. I was like, dude, that is amazing. That is the coolest fucking album cover I've ever seen. And uh, he was like, thanks, man. And we just kind of started chatting, and I sort of told him what the story was with us, and I said, yeah, check us out. 
and he listened to us and he was like dude oh my god you guys are amazing and we just kind of made a friendship i was like well you know when we do a record you know we would like you to do it it was just kind of you know so then we got this new deal and you know and i had mentioned that i wanted sam to do the the artwork and um and so that's basically how that went down and he's he's phenomenal i was actually supposed to meet up with him tonight and everything was so chaotic down there's so many fucking people that like it was it was like you, you can't even think you know and so i didn't end up meeting up with him i'm kind of really kind of bummed out about that but uh because he lives in england you know so anyways um so yeah so that's that's who did that you know and, and he'll probably do the next one too you know he's, he's really talented man yeah i agree he's <laughs> he's kick ass so yeah he's done stuff for iron maiden and rob zombie and all kinds of people man you know he's he's really talented so that's very cool yeah so how often do you guys um how often do you guys get together and practice and stuff you know what man not as often as we should um we really like you know there'll be like a big show that comes up and we'll 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 nail it real hard you know we'll do it like you know a couple times a week you know maybe three rehearsals or whatever and we'll just go out and knock out the show uh the thing is you know the, the the level of musicianship in the band is 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 quite high so the guys that are playing you know they really know their stuff and um and so even if we sound like not exactly perfectly tight in rehearsal you know we're all pros we've been doing it for so long that as soon as as soon as those, those curtains open man there's people there you know we just go out there and just stomp ass and that's pretty much how it works out and then the rest of the time we just spend you know you know uh off you know because i mean you know a lot of people don't see the other side of things most bands man that don't have all this shit going on you know they just rehearse and rehearse and rehearse because they right. don't have anything else to do right but us man i'm constantly on the radio you know or i'm or we're dealing with you know pre-production stuff or this that and the other thing you know huh I hate that place, dude. Let's just go right here to Mabel's. It's close. It's close to my house. I don't even know if I'm allowed in there. Um, but, uh, but, uh, you know, so, so we end up, um, uh, so, you know, a lot of people don't see that part of it, you know, but because we have this label and we had this, this publicist and we have somebody like Trevor is constantly working on stuff for us. He's constantly providing us with things that we have to do, it's like you know we we we're, we're, we work on it every single day. I mean, we may not rehearse constantly, but we're on it every single day. There's not a day that goes by where we're not doing something. Right. Well, and that's good. You know, I mean, you got to do that to get yourself out there. So you have to. There's no. There's no other way. You know. And you know. I, you know. I'm good friends with with Zach Wild. So every day we text back and forth, and every day he basically you know, watches over me, you know, what'd you do today? What'd you do today for CBF? What'd you do today? You know, and I got to give, you know, the boss a report or I'm not working hard enough. Right. He doesn't, he doesn't want to hear, you know, I didn't have time. That's not, that's not an option. So, you know, when you got somebody like that up your ass every day, you better get something done or you're just going to get brushed off. Like he tells me all the time, I hope you like your fucking day job. <laughs> you know, and that, and there's there's no you know there's no the complaint department is closed. Right. You don't like it, start eating nails for breakfast. Yep. That's his whole attitude towards it, and I have to take I have to take that and I have to go with it, and you know because I'm lucky to even have that. So, um, you know, it's 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 uh, one of those things that um, that uh, you know it's just it really brings up the work ethic. And, you know, it's really, it's, it's John and I that really do the majority of it. I mean, the guys, the other guys would do it as well, but it just, John and I work so well together that it's just like we just handle everything and then we just tell them, hey, guys, we got this show, or hey, guys, you know, we're going to be on this radio program or whatever, and, you know, and then they're like, all right, cool, we'll be there, you know, with bells on, big fucking smiles on their face, and we like it that way. It works, <laughs> you know, if it if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know right. what I mean? So, yep, and you can only have so many hands in the pot, you know? That too. You know, like, I mean, so many times before another band, I was a bitch, like, this guy never does anything. Oh, he doesn't show up for rehearsal. 
You know, well, in hindsight, man, I've learned that that's actually a good thing. You know, now now that I have somebody like John, you know, who's, who's a great business partner, you know, he, he, we really work well together. So, you know, um, uh, he's a great business partner, and we're able to, um, uh, you know, um, uh, just work on things. And, you know, I ask him, or he tells me what I got to do, and I just listen. I don't argue with him. You know, or I, you know, he asked me what I think on a certain thing, and I say, no, dude, I'm, we got to do it this way. Trust me. I know what I'm talking about on this. We've got to do it this way. And he just goes, all right, then that's the way we're going to do it. And that's the way the man works. You just give and take, you know. And, you know, you got, you got two cooks in the kitchen, and you got two soldiers that are ready to throw down whenever it's time to throw down, and it really is a very balanced situation. And, and you know, and it works well because of that. Yeah, it sounds like it. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, so, so anyways. So, so um, you know, what were your influences growing up that got you into metal and just wanted you to do this? I mean, besides wanting, you know, all the stuff you mentioned earlier, you know, what were your bands that you just loved to listen to? Well, I remember, you know, my dad was, my dad was big on, um, on uh, uh, classic rock, you know, when I was a kid. So it was everything from, you know, the Beatles and Zeppelin and all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, but what really hit me... You know, my cousin came to live with us when I was like eight years old, my cousin Randy. And uh, he was real big into metal. He was a few years older than me, five, six years older than me. And uh, he was really big into metal. And so he really got me turned on to, you know, like um, 80s hair metal, like, you know, docking and shit like that, which I ended up, you know, working for George Lynch and actually playing tar and lynch mob for a while. But uh, uh, anyways, he ended up um, uh, kind of turning me on to it. And I remember the first time I heard Guns N' Roses, I heard Appetite for Destruction, and I was absolutely blown away. I was like, oh, my God, the guitar player looks like a cartoon character. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, And these guys are heavy, and, but, but their songs are, like, ear-friendly. But at the same time, they're, they're brutal, you know? And, and I just thought it was just so cool. And um, I remember I would just get so excited whenever I'd see it come on MTV or whatever. You know, it just, it just blew my mind, man. And, um, and then, uh, you know, and then, and then I got into, like, you know, the heavier stuff. You know, when, when, I, when I just got turned on to Pantera, and I was just like, oh, my God, who the fuck are these guys? You know, this, this is unbelievable. And that just changed the whole game plan. You know, I was already playing guitar and shit at that point. Um, oh, and so Pantera really changed a lot for me, you know, uh, really, really laid the groundwork for me, them and Guns N' Roses, you know. That's cool. I remember the very first video I ever saw on MTV was, was Welcome to the Jungle, and I was hooked. Right. Can you hear me? Yeah. Sounds like you're in a bar now. <laughs> I am in a bar. Go ahead, though. Sweet. You should, um, at the end of the interview, you should see if you can get everybody to yell Metalhead Radio or something. Yeah, absolutely I can. Excellent. Absolutely I can. Um, so uh, what was that question you asked me? Oh, we're, we're past it. We're done. You, you answered it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got, I got it. I'm on the radio right now. Hold on. <laughs> hey. Ah, fuck. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry, dude. No, it, it's, it's awesome, dude. I, I, I actually dig this a lot. <laughs> It's fucking freezing cold outside. I just walked into a bar and I can barely hear anything. Yeah, I don't. But anyways. Okay, so if I was to, um, this is a personal question you get for the night. If I was to grab, like, your MP3 player, how you listen to music, what do I find you listening to right now? You know, that's the funny thing, man, is, like, it would be something, you know, like, I, I'm really eclectic when it comes to music. Like, I, I'm into, like, you know, I mean, Prince, um... You know, the, the musicology record, I think, is amazing. Um, you know, all the way to, like, you know, old Outlaw Country, you know, stuff like that. Um, uh, Outlaw Country, David Allen Coe, all the way to, like, France, all the way to, like, you know, um, uh, the Beatles, um, all the way to, like, Lamb of God and, like, some of the more extreme metal bands, you know, um, Sabbath, you know, Zeppelin. I'm really, I'm really much more into, like, you know, the classic rock more than I am into like you know modern day metal or whatever all the kids are listening to um but yeah, uh new metal sucks man 
God. Yeah, new metal sucks, dude. It's gotta, it's gotta go. You know, our whole, our whole thing is, you know, classicness and, and, and staying away from the, the, the fucking stupid trends and all that kind of stuff. I hate all that stuff, man. <laughs> it's gotta go. And, you know, and I'm not surprised after after talking to you now. I'm not surprised by this, but w- when I listen to the album, I hear a lot of, um, and maybe it's just me, but I hear a lot of old Black Sabbath in there. Yeah, I mean it's and it's done like that, and it's done on purpose. You know what I mean? It's like we want you to we want you to be able to li- we want you to listen to that and go. That sounds like fucking Sabbath. You know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. the, and the new and the new stuff we did it even kind of more so. Like, hey, dude, sing like Ozzy there. You know, well, he right. sounds like he sounds just like Ozzy. They're well, then good. <laughs> yeah, that's a good compliment to have. Yeah, yeah, because Ozzy fucking rules. Yep. So you know, go for it. You know, oh, you sound like Zach Wild when you do that ping. Good. You know, because that dude fucking kicks ass, or you know, whatever, or the solo sounds like a Slash thing. All right, well then, good. You know, it is it's better than you know. Hey, you know, you sound like that fucking new metal band, like everybody else does. That's the thing. Like all the other metal bands, like they they just. They just, you know, base themselves off of whatever's hot right now. So they all just end up sounding the same. Fuck that shit, dude. It's gay. Yeah. Okay. No, it's gay. Okay. And if they and if they do if they do get a deal or go anywhere with it, all that ends up happening is they just end up um uh they just end up you know, they have like a, a three year run or whatever and then it's all over with. Yep. Once the trend's gone, it's just they're gone, you know? We wanna be one of those forever bands, you know, like fucking Zeppelin or Sabbath, you know? The band is just timeless, man. Yep, so. and, and yeah, and to go back to your comment about Zach Wild, I mean, come on, Black Label Society, <laughs> freaking kicks ass. Oh yeah, no, without a doubt, man. You I, know, I just got um, order the I just got their order the Black album on vinyl, and it is so sweet to listen to on vinyl. I just love it. Oh yeah, you know they uh, they uh, he had us up uh, he had us up on um, at, at his house uh, <laughs> he had us up at his house. Uh, because he's got a studio in the house, you know. It, it, there's two houses on the property, and he's got a studio. And uh, he's like, "Yeah, dude, come up and listen to the new shit. Tell me what you think." So me and my buddy Steve got to go up and hear "Order the Black" before anybody had even heard it. That's awesome. Yeah, it was fucking totally awesome. You know, we're just like sitting there, like listening to, you know, the new "Order the Black" record. You know, listening to fucking, you know, all the piano stuff and all the, you know, southern southern disillusion and like for the first time i'm just going holy fuck dude you nailed it because you know he's he was sober that's the first record he'd done sober so i can tell the difference on that you know what i mean right i, I can tell that the difference in focus that he had you know what i mean and you know i mean it's it's very obvious and and i think that you know it just goes to show i uh, have a cool light in the bottle so you know what i mean it's it's um it makes a big difference, and I, I, I think that the, that material is really strong, and I, and I think that, uh, you know, it's going to continue to be. Yep. You know, and I know he's got some more shit that he's coming up with, and thank you. Want to run a tab? Um, he's got some, some new stuff that he's coming up with, and, uh, uh, yep. I think he'll probably do, like, another year um, on this album cycle. I believe it's a two-year album cycle, so he'll probably do another year of touring. And then... Uh, and then after that, you know, he'll he'll do another record. And he'll probably have it recorded and in the can before he even, you know, before anybody even knows that there's one coming out. <laughs> right, exactly. He's got he's got the uh, you know he's got the capability to do that. Yeah. You know. So. Okay, so back to Crown by Fire though. Where can people buy the current album at? Um, at Crown by Fire on um, www.crownbyfire.com or. Amazon, iTunes, pretty much anywhere that you can buy a record, it's it's available. I mean, you just type in Crown by Fire into Google, and it's going to take you to eight different places where you can buy the record. Well, that's, that's cool. It's good that you <laughs> you, you have good people pushing to, to get it marketed out there, because I talk to a lot of that's, bands that do not. Yeah, that's Trevor McKendry for you, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? That guy's a stud, man. Yep, excellent. He, he handles business. Anything else you want to uh, tell the world about you guys that we haven't talked about? Uh, um, we're going to be premiering uh, some new material uh, Sunday to February 5th on KNAC, KNAC.com with Crazy Craig. 
Uh, we're going to premiere some new material. Um, it won't be available for download because it's just the pre-production stuff. But like I said, the pre-production stuff sounds so slam, and we want people to hear it. So we're going to do that, and and do and uh, so people you know want to hear some stuff, some new stuff. You can uh, tune in on that knac.com. Um, uh, you know, just pay attention to the uh, to the to the website. You know, the crowdbyfire.com, and it's going to have all types of info on there for you. Okay. I tell you what. As soon as you, uh, as soon as you are ready to to uh, send, if you send me those new tracks, I'll get them on my show ASAP. Yeah, absolutely, man. As soon as we get get it figured out what we want to do with them, yep. And every everybody will get them. Yep. Everybody that's on this list of everybody that we've interviewed for and, and all that kind of stuff, you all get them. Okay, excellent. Because I'll get them. I'll uh, I'll get them in rotation on the station, so they'll be twenty four seven. Awesome, dude. Thank you very much. Yep. So, okay, last thing I have to ask is if you can make a couple of radio tags for me. Sure. So, if you can uh, make one with yourself and, you know, just say this is Crowned by Fire and you're listening to DJ Rem at MetalheadRadio.com. Okay. You ready? Yep. Hey, this is Justin with Crowned by Fire. You're listening to DJ Rem with, with who? MetalheadRadio.com. All right. Hi, this is Justin from Crown by Fire. You listen to DJ Rem with MetalheadRadio.com. Perfect. Now, if you can do a second one with just you again, and uh, just leave me out and just say, you know, this is Justin from Crown by Fire, and you're listening to MetalheadRadio.com. This is Justin, the Crown by Fire, and you're listening to MetalheadRadio.com. Perfect, perfect, man. Appreciate it. I'll send that out to uh, the DJs to play. So. Cool, cool. Okay, so now since you're in a bar, let's see if we can get like the crowd to yell Metalhead Radio or something. Well, there's not a whole crowd in here, but there's a few of my friends standing right here. Oh, that your friends will work. Yeah. All right. All right. What well, you want them to say? What MetalheadRadio.com? Yeah. Just you know, say yeah. Just just scream Metalhead Radio something. Uh, okay. Hey, you guys. There you go. <laughs> Very cool. Thank there you. you. Okay, man. Well, thank, thanks again for uh, taking the time uh, to talk to me. I appreciate it a bunch. Okay. And we'll... Uh, thanks, thanks for having me. I, mean, I appreciate it. Yep. Well, and like I said, I wish you guys, with everything you got going on, wish you the best of luck. And uh, I'll, be, I'll be following to see what's happening. Yeah, just, uh, you know, feel free to write me or whatever whenever you want, dude. Yep, will do. Okay. Bye, dude. Cheers. Take care, man. Bye. Later.